One of our speakers has been playing piano since he was eight and loves to travel anywhere. So let's actually throw out places for him to travel and see if he's either already gone there or wants to add it to his list. And speaking of travel, our other speaker is training for an expedition to the Himalayas that's coming up in six weeks. So we have some great travel plans coming up. Please welcome Bernardo and Iggy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. And uh, what a fantastic atmosphere you have here. And um, so hello and warm welcome everyone to who is here live. And if you are watching the recording, hello uh, to you too. It is a real privilege for us to join you at this art conference. And we are really excited and humbled to share with you our project, our Project Robin, which is an experimental semi-automated open source R package uh, for marketing mix modeling MMM. Uh, that was created by us uh, at Facebook Marketing Science, but you know we get to all that. So before we start, a qu couple of quick intros. I mean, the quick intros for both of us. I am uh, Igor or Iggy, as you know everybody calls me. I'm a Facebook Marketing Science partner based in uh, London, UK, and I'm joined here with Bernardo. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Bernardo Lares. I'm a Venezuelan, but located in Colombia. And I'm really happy and excited to be sharing this with you today. So we are both from a marketing science team at Facebook. And, you know, in general, Facebook is a very, very mission, mission driven company. And, you know, to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. But the mission and the goal of marketing science inside Facebook, our team, is we want all businesses to grow by transforming their marketing practices that are grounded in data and science and do it in a privacy same way. And this is where idea of Robin, the, this open source library came from and, you know, and the building the community around it. As you will see shortly, Robin uses various mathematical and machine learning techniques to estimate the marketing channel effect effectiveness and efficiency. And it is built for like modern granular digital data sets. So of course, you know, MMM or econometrics is not new, but what we are, you know, it's a long standing time tested method, but we are aiming to bring it to its digital future, enable it for, you know, many independent variables, make it suitable for modern digital direct response data rich sources. But also we are really interested in, and what we really want is to build a community of MMM methodologists, uh, people who would be, a, who we could interact with and discuss innovation and contribute to the uh, open source. Robin itself, in, in fact, is a manifestation or an expression of our overall Facebook vision uh, about MMM, uh, you know, bringing it sort of into the tangible form. So we foresee the evolution of MMM to become, you know, machine learning supported, very, very granular, being able to give tactical uh, as, well, as well as strategic uh, marketing recommendations, being semi-automated, uh, still have an analyst oversight, Calibrated with experiments or you know ground truths, and we talk about this and you know deliver insights on faster and on a continuous basis. So this is obviously conditioned on using the best possible, highest quality data, coupled with you know contemporary methodologies. We as Facebook actually conduct a lot of research into into the MMM as a technique, and in order to move forward, uh, we believe there are three key developments with you know associated three three benefits. Uh, based on the latest research that we that we have conducted. So first one is minimizing human bias in uh, in um, in the in model building. So this can be achieved by you know using using something like um, using uh, ridge regression for example as well as automated hyperparameter selection and and other uh, other uh, sub sub modules uh, such as profit. Aligning with ground truth is obviously of absolute importance. You know, in uh, model, all models, you know, contain um, some kind of error, but, you know, making sure that we, we are able to validate and calibrate with experiments or with geo tests uh, is of utmost importance. And finally, you know, in order to br bring MMM to its digital future, it has to, it has to provide insights in a much more uh, agile way and more actionable. Uh, so we will talk about continuous modeling and how that uh, how that is working. Bernardo, we will deep dive into it. So really, what we are trying to do, and and we've moved from the classic MMM to what is currently in Project Robin. So instead of manual modeling, uh, we're looking at hyperparameter selection instead of like static models. Can we can this be more um, 
more uh, frequent and more dynamic? Uh, and how do we deal with you know things like manual seasonality uh, or you know having only statistical validation? So so this is in a nutshell uh, what we what we have. And then now Bernard, I will hand over to Bernardo to take you through the, the sort of details and the flow behind behind Robin and how the how the modules look like in R. Thank you, Iggy. Well, to better understand the flow behind Robin, we can cluster all the code into four main modules. The first one we have for, uh, for feature engineering, where we run some transformations to all media variables so we can account for the carryover, the diminishing return effects, and the spend rich nonlinear relationships that may exist between these variables. We also add uh, seasonality and trends breakdowns features uh, with the help of the Prophet R library. Uh, and adding all of these new features often increases model fit and reduces the autoregressive patterns in our residuals. This second module, the, the core model, uh, runs a rich regression with uh, GLM net or Gleam net, uh, whichever it is uh, pronounced. Uh, with uh, cross validation to the to to transform the data results from the previous model we can also enable another parameter to use the ground truth calibration if we have been able to measure with experiments now we're going to talk about why this is important um, the third module is uh, a combination of steps and options for model selection and model refresh once we have several models trained with the help of Nevergrad uh, Python library imported via Reticulate, we calculate a set of optimal solutions using the multi-objective hyperparameters optimization evolutionary algorithms. And we output the best Pareto results that should be considered as the best fits. When uh, you have additional updated data and uh, you'd like to refresh this uh, selected model, then you return to the step and retrain the model uh, with your new updated information. Um, this capability enables using MMM as a continuous reporting tool and therefore makes it quite more actionable. And the last module is the budget allocator, which brings actionable budget allocation decisions based on all previous steps and results. Using the selected model results and the saturation curve of each paid media variable, uh, with the Robin allocator function, we will provide the optimal mix of spend that maximizes the, the total response. As I'm sure you'd expect, we can constrain and force any of the channel spends so the tool adapts as best as possible to your marketing strategy. So as you can see in this process, we are using several modern methods to help automate and improve the classical MMM process. Uh, but Today, I'd like to highlight uh, only three of those. So Weibull at Socking, which enables flexible decay rates over time. With this methodology, we can uh, benefit to, to better reflect the uncertainty of carryover in the consumer behavior of the product. Uh, the second Facebook Nevergrad, uh, it has uh, a bunch of algorithms to, for hyperparameters optimization which considers thousands of combinations per minute and helps us find the optimal combination of parameters that will minimize the errors in the in, in record timings. It's super fast. And ground truth calibration to improve the model's fit and performance based on true value measured through experiments. So these three contemporary methods are very much related to what Iggy just mentioned. Uh, which are minimizing human bias, aligning with the ground truth, and enabling actionable decision making based uh, on, on data and science. So, minimizing human bias is one of the key challenges Robin aims to solve. Uh, as you may know already, uh, classic MMM models rely heavily on the exper on the experience of this uh, of the analyst that is uh, uh, developing it. Uh, especially when selecting the right explanatory variables to be considered into the model, assigning the correct ad stock and saturation curve shapes and parameters, and determining the trend and seasonality. Uh, so what techniques 
does Robin use to help the final user automate and unbiased these decisions? So first, using an automated multi-objective hyperparameter optimization with an evolutionary algorithm allows to efficiently sample thousands of possible ad stock and saturation curves combinations while minimizing the three main errors, model error, the decomposition distance, and calibration error. I'm going to talk in a few minutes about each of these. The second is uh, we run rich regression with cross-validation. This is a regularization technique that deals with uh, intercorrelated explanatory variables in our data set. And it prevents uh, us from overfitting and allows more freedom when choosing the variables to train our models with. And the third is uh, the profit seasonality decomposition, which uses a uh, Facebook open source machine learning library for time series forecasting. We use profit to automatically decompose the trend and seasonality information and include them as additional features. Here in this chart, uh, displayed on the right, shows the, the performance of the multi-objective optimization run by Nevergrad over 10,000 iter iterations using our dummy data set included in the library. The, the axis represent the two objective functions to be minimized when, calibrate, when calibration is not provided because when we provide calibration, we'll have uh, three objectives. Uh, as the number of iterations increases, uh, we can clearly observe a trend to the lower left corner of the plot. And this is a uh, clear proof of Nevergrad's ability to drive the model results toward the desired direction in an evolutionary way. So, and the red lines shown are the first two third Pareto fronts, which contains the best possible model results from all iterations. So the second contemporary benefit I'd like to mention is calibration. With uh, calibration, we can improve our model's predictions using causation data instead of pure correlations. So we strongly believe that integrating experimental results into our MMM is the best choice for model selection. Experiments such as uh, randomized controlled trials are uh, causal by nature and can be seen as the ground truth impact of our treatments. So what we do when providing calibration data is minimizing the mean absolute percent error between our predictions and our ground truth results. To take advantage of this approach, we add this uh, additional error into the hyperparameter optimization algorithm to be minimized. And to ensure closer results to the experiments, we apply stronger weight to this error. Um, we can use this technique to calibrate any channel and time period within our MMM's date range. So the more experiments, the better. Then the third challenge and benefit that uh, Robin addresses is enabling actionable decision-making information, uh, which can be achieved with uh, the diminishing return curves, the ad stock curves, and the budget allocator. For, for the budget allocator, we use a nonlinear solver that allows equal and unequal budget constraints to help us de define optimal budget allocation for the upcoming cycles. And the diminishing returns and ad stock curves the model prints for us will help understand the inflection points and locate these sweet spots for our investment on uh, every channel. So now let's check out some of the outputs Robin models uh, returns as well. So one of the main outputs will be uh, this. Uh, this is an example of a one-sheeter with uh, several charts. In order from left to right and top to bottom, as uh, you'd read uh, at any text, we will have first the, the waterfall chart with the total decomposition of all the independent variables and their dimensions. Then the predicted versus actual to visualize visualize the time series fit compared with the model prediction and performance metrics. So you can see how, how, uh, how fit is the model. Uh, then we have media decomposition chart uh, showing the media share of spend versus the share of effect of uh, ROAS or CPA. And this plot also gives us a hint on the intuition of the objective function that minimizes the decomposition distance to avoid uh, extreme cases. 
the fourth is uh, saturation curves. They show the hill functions with induced saturation curves for each media variable. Uh, then we have the average media decay rate comparison. When using geometric stock, it will show you the theta hyperparameter selected. And when using Weibull, given that it has a two parameters with changing decay rate over time, it is a bit more difficult to illustrate intuitively. So in this case, we use a visual approximate to the Weibull average decay. And the last plot is uh, fitted versus residuals to visualize the model diagnosis uh, given the residuals and trends. So uh, um, as, as you might know, we are super excited about this project and we would like to invite you to join the community and start being a part of it, either as an active user or as a collaborator. Uh, this is an open source R project we've started where marketers from different backgrounds and sources gather up to set a scalable, trustworthy methodology to optimize marketing spends across different channels and understand their ROIs based on data and science. So now it's your turn to test it and start being a part of it. You may visit uh, Robin's website on GitHub. Uh, I'll ask uh, Iggy or someone to copy and paste it and share it in the chat. In there, you'll find detailed step-by-step -step guides uh, to try Robin out, uh, dummy data sets so you can test it if you don't have the data yet. We'll have uh, details about Robin's features and advantages and uh, a couple of public success stories of actual advertisers who have been using Robin to take allocation decisions. As of today, you can also install Robin as an independent package, uh, running the code shown in the slide into your local machines. And we're very much looking forward to keep growing and improving its functionalities with you. And uh, we'll submit the library to CRAN uh, as soon as it has a, a stable uh, validated version. So as a final statement, uh, I'd like to highlight that our goal here is to create a community of methodologists to debate and impulse MMM innovation in an open source environment. So back to you, Iggy. Thank you. And um, just to maybe bring it a little bit more to life with the two case studies that uh, we've been humbled and lucky to have advertisers uh, confirm. So one is uh, Resident, which is a uh, Israel e-commerce uh, company uh, selling uh, furniture and mattresses online. Uh, and the other one is the central re retail group uh, in Thailand. But we have many more uh, other users. But you know, like you can you can find links to this uh, online and, and and see what they've done and how they have actually gone and used Robin in in their uh, in their situations. Um, so what's next? I mean, actually, this conference came really uh, really in advance of our next uh, release, which is Robin 3.0. We are releasing on the 29th of September at the Robin Community Summit. I will uh, show the link to it shortly for those who is interested in joining. It will have a few uh, new features and new innovations, uh, the model refresh and the rolling windows we slightly touched upon already. Uh, this will be officially released end of the month. Uh, it will also have uh, support for organic variables. Uh, those are such that obviously drive marketing impact, but do not have necessarily associated uh, spend or dollars. This could be uh, in organic uh, content, for example. Uh, and we've made some tweaks and um, improvements to the optimization convergence of the Nevergrad algorithms uh, as well. And finally, of course, we will be releasing this as a package. And as Bernardo just mentioned, hopefully in crowd soon. We are also working on uh, our Shiny app to uh, enable and bring Robin to a broader community of non-coder or non-coders. So this is currently in closed beta, but we're hoping probably towards the end of the year uh, we might have a, a broader update for for this. So we're really excited about this one. Obviously, code is great, but you know, bringing it in an UI is gonna be uh, is gonna be great. And I know we are the, at the R conference. I'm just gonna mention we're also working on a Python translation, so there will be a Python version uh, hopefully soon as well. And then we 
we really uh, gonna start working on Robin 4.0, uh, which probably gonna have um, major feature dealing with regional models and mixed uh, mixed models. Um, so probably a nested or a nested model. So so there are plenty of exciting uh, feature, uh, features to do. Uh, two things that we already mentioned. Uh, one is the uh, Robin Summit, Robin Community Summit. Uh, on the end of the month, so those of you who are more interested to learn more, or here actually we're gonna have the uh, we're gonna have the analysts from Central Group as well as uh, from um, Nectar Resident come join us and discuss. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna showcase some of this uh, in much more detail. Uh, if you have any questions for us, I know there is no Q and A, but please join our community group on Facebook facebook.com slash groups robin mmm uh, we are all uh, admin there it's quite lively out there so you can you know pop your question there or interact with us in any shape or form there so you know please do join us uh at the summit and and join us uh, join our community group and you know you can you can keep an eye on this project and if it's interesting uh to you too so we would like to thank you very much i think we are on time um for your time and attention today and uh, we can't be wait we can't wait to have you part of our Robin community and um, happy analyzing. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you very much for uh, bringing us our last talk of the day. I saw there's some more chatter about Glimnet, and in the chat while you two were speaking, uh, people came across we should make a package called Glamnet.